This episode is brought to you by Experts Exchange, the original technology community. If you're in IT, listen up. This might literally be the answer to all of your problems. You know, I'm not the only one who's been stuck on a problem at work or at home, and we've all been there. And we all do the same thing, right? Well, we either Google it, Bing it, or even DuckDuckGo it. And we end up finding a guy on a random forum who's posted an answer to our questions anywhere between 8 to 10 years ago. And we just have to trust that he's the right solution. If you trust the wrong person, you could be putting your organization and yourself at risk. What if there is a group of people you know you can trust? That's an expert exchange, or as we call it here, EE. EE is a community of thousands of of tech professionals who have been helping each other solve problems for over 25 years. Many of the members are highly accomplished with titles like Microsoft MVP, Oracle Ace, just to name a few. You don't have to be an expert to be on EE. All you have to do is be willing to help. No one can be an expert in everything. That's why you need to surround yourself with people you can trust. Right now, listeners to Tech Time Radio can join EE completely free for seven days. All you got to do is go to e-e.com to get started. That's right. All you got to do is go e-e.com and make sure you let them know Nathan Mum at Tech Time Radio sent you on over there. Broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, mmm, technology news of the week. The show for the common everyday person broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. Well, we welcome our 35 million radio audience to our hour of insightful technology with a little whiskey on the side. I'm Nathan Mum, and welcome to our show as we live stream during our show on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch TV, Twitter, Facebook, and now LinkedIn. So welcome to the LinkedIn crowd. Uh, Now, you can always encourage us by watching and then deciding to go and do a tweet on Twitter with hashtag, or as they call that, the pound sign back in the day. Or the, don't, don't confuse everybody. Oh, okay. it's, <laughs> tech it's time hashtag. radio. Hashtag, hashtag tech time, tech time radio, radio during the show, and we'll do our best to respond to all of those answers and questions that you may have. Um, I'm a technologist with 30 years expertise working on companies like Microsoft and Vulcan as a keynote speaker for technology subjects from security to blockchain and everything in between. My co-host, Mike Corday, is an award-winning author, originally from Arizona. Glad he moved up here. He's a human behavior expert living in the Seattle area with a master's degree in forensic psychology with a 20-plus year career helping others understand human behavior so that they can make the better decisions in their life. Mike keeps me from geeking out while providing an insight into human behavior and how it interacts with technology. We're two friends that come from different backgrounds but bring the best technology show possible every week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. All right, now today's show, before we get it kicked off, it's going to be a very serious show. We're going to be talking about technology and wartime aspects between what's going on right now in Ukraine and in Russia. So we're spending our almost our whole segment of our show talking about technology that is being used on the war front. So it's, right. going, to, it's going to be a very interesting show. Now, Odie, let's get ready to start our show today. Now on today's show. All right. Who is winning the war on technology between Russia and Ukraine? We explore what each country is doing in the fight, both good and bad. First, we'll look at Russia and how it is using technology to impact the war. And then we're going to take a look at the Ukrainian government, civilians and President Zelensky on Ukraine's uses of technology to reach the nations in the West. Welcome to our special wartime technology segment with our guest, Nick Espinoza, joining us all the way from Chicago. He's been ready to go. We've been spending a lot of hours planning this show, so we're very excited about it. We have an excerpt from Nick's interview with Ukraine's Member of Parliament, Ina Sovinson. Ina. Ina Sovinson. He just said that too. Ina Sovinson. In addition, we have our favorite features, including This Week in Technology, of course, Mike's mesmerizing moment and our pick of the day whiskey tasting. So sit back, raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Now it's time to start our show with our loaded question of the week brought to you by Elderberry Boost. Get your Elderberry Boost today at elderberry-boost.com. Mike and Odie, here is your loaded question. Tell me something about yourself 
that you think I may not know? Well, that's easy. Well, okay. Well, that's just, that's what the question said. I'm just reading the question. Uh, did well, you did you know that uh, I rode in the 1800s cavalry? Uh, I did not know that. Okay. How did, how did you do that? Uh, I was a member of the 4th Cavalry B Troop Memorial Unit of the U.S. Army okay. from 1990 to 1992. I didn't know that's what it was called. But did you accidentally, or not accidentally, but did you actually perform for the Rose Bowl? I did. I was in the see, Rose Parade. See, I knew that. I knew that. I just didn't know exactly. You just didn't remember why. I just didn't know why. So there you go. Okay. Well, congratulations. Did you know that <laughs> I, I, I ate breakfast yesterday? <laughs> did you really? <laughs> Absolutely. Was it Wheaties or Cheerios? All right. Uh, you, now, okay. Let me ask you before I go to Odie. <laughs> okay. Wheaties, the nastiest cereal ever. I don't know how did, they just decided to, to brand that Wheaties Breakfast of Champions. So if you just call it you, Breakfast of Champions, then people are going to like it. You know, you really need to look up why cereal was. Was created in the first place. Okay, by Kellogg. By Kellogg. Is, yes. it, is there a whole story about that? There's a whole story about that, and it is not what you think it is. It has nothing to do with nutrition. Really? Okay. All right, Odie. The next question is to you. Um, I wear kid size shoes. You wear kid size shoes. Yeah. Oh. I'm a 21 year old, and I can fit into my 12 year old brother's shoes that are a size three in men's. Does that like save you a lot of money though? Yeah, I mean, kind of. Because <laughs> I mean, if you're a gal, you have like 550 pairs of shoes, right? So now you only have to pay the kids' price. Yeah. It, really? Okay. Is that, well, my is that mom, how you're going to work that oh, yeah, one. Okay, in? okay. Let me tell you, my mom. My mom is four feet eleven. Uh-huh. Right. She is a tiny little gal, also, mm-hmm. okay. and so she can buy uh, kids' shoes also. And she would do that. And she was like, every time she went to the store and she bought them, she's like, "Look at these great new shoes they're taking care of, and they're half the price." If I was two sizes larger, I'd be in the adults, and it's the same I mean, exact yeah. stuff. yeah. When I buy, like, de- not designer shoes, but definitely, like, shoes that are more well-known, like a Nike Air Force. Yeah. My sister and my cousins, they all had to pay a lot, like, 20 or $30 more than I did. So that's a benefit. So congratulations. There you all go. Right. <laughs> and uh, something you know you didn't know about me, I think you probably did, though we were talking about a little bit about this before the show, that I used to live in Africa. Yep. I lived in Africa for... Uh, three plus years of my childhood in uh, third, fourth, and fifth grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah I knew that. Did. Yeah, you did. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, so there you go. You're an open book, buddy. <laughs> Am I an open book? There you go. I'm not. <laughs> all right, well, now, now, Mike, we're going to always have our whiskey tasting during the commercials where you've selected a whiskey. It's either going to get zero, one, or two thumbs up in our pick of the day. Yeah, let's Make, hope it's better than last week. Uh, let's hope so. Make sure you listen all the way through to pick up a few interesting facts that will make you go, mm, today's show. I guarantee you, you're going to learn stuff today about technology that you have not known about that should just make you go, hmm. Mm, well, let's get to it that. then. All right. Now in our first segment, bringing you the top technology stories everyone will be talking about for weeks to come here in the first five minutes of the show. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. All right. Welcome to story number one. Big tech's effort to support Ukraine shift the industry's role in a time of war. Big tech has responded to Russia's invasion of Ukraine by offering assistance to Ukrainians, hurting Russia's disinformation campaign and shuttering services for Moscow's military. that They could be seen on the ground moving without the industry's defectual participation. As requested, the Ukrainian government rocket company SpaceX activates satellite internet service in Ukraine through its star-like system, a move that keeps the country connected to the web even as Russia attacks its own websites. Airbnb has offered free housing to Ukrainians fleeing and fighting, uh, fleeing the fighting, and the U.S. phone carriers have waived fees to customers who need to call Ukraine. Big social networks, including Facebook, owner Meta. Twitter and Google, who owns Facebook, have similar uh, questions. Well, uh, owns YouTube. YouTube. Not sorry, Google, who owns YouTube, have similar dealings with disinformation and propaganda. All three have placed restrictions on Russian state run media's access to ad platforms and continue to fact check posts to deem if they're true or false. Microsoft and Google have limited downloads of Russian state run media services from their app store. Separately, Google disabled a feature that displays the traffic conditions in a widely lose map app after consulting with the Ukrainian government. The move could also make navigation more difficult to the Russian military. The government in Kiev also uh, appealed to Apple to block Russians from accessing its app store because modern technology is perhaps the best answers to the tanks, multiple rocket launchers and missiles that are being attacked. 
The actions taken by the big tech companies indicate a changing level of involvement for corporations caught in the global conflict. While industries have always had a role in war efforts, companies weren't often involved in battlefield actions. Now businesses are actors in conflict. Patreon, a fundraising website, suspended a campaign to raise money for Ukrainian military training because it violated policies against funding weapons or military activities. The decision can make relationships among the companies in the countries in which they operate very testy, but the company may have no choice but to take action. We are shocked and heartbroken at the invasion of Ukraine, patrons said, pointing to the charities and platforms that they could use to donate instead, including the Ukrainian Red Cross Society, Voices of Children, uh, of Ukraine and 3,000 plus other Ukrainian creators on Patreon. Patreon said that it will refund all money in the account to the contributors of the other areas once they close them. Meta did just that on Monday, saying Monday that it will limit the access of Sputnik and RT across the European nation. Now, Sputnik and RT are the main media sites that people use. They have received requests from a number of governments on the U- European Union to take effort and to stop the Russian state-controlled media. On Tuesday, this morning, Google said that it would post on Twitter that it would block YouTube channels connected to RT and Sputnik across Europe. Google, the video giant's parent company, didn't immediately respond to questions, but the RT main channel on YouTube has more than 4.6 million subscribers, while Sputnik has over 300,000 subscribers no longer getting stories. Mm. So this is the real first war time this this is this is how this is how we're seeing global connectivity uh access information that we really didn't have access to years ago yes and right the responses and now we now it's just whether or not this is going to assist or hinder so i'm going to ask nick uh, coming on up here if there's something that we can do cuz the internet right so everybody expects the internet to always be open mm-hmm. do you know that you could actually take the ip addresses of russia and actually block them on the internet chain, and then they would be stuck only within their community themselves and not able to relay back and forth. So when does the internet, is the internet a public entity that everybody has access to, or could you shut that down also? Well, the internet is more complicated than we we ever imagined it would be. So that's, that's, that's a question that I think would take a lot more time to answer. That'd probably be a whole show on itself, just that one question itself, wouldn't it? It might be 80 shows. 80 shows. All right. Story number two, real quick. Anonymous, the hacker collective that has declared cyber war on Russia. Let's listen to the threat that the group sent to Russia and Vladimir Putin's regime. Greetings, citizens of the world. This is a message to Vladimir Putin from Anonymous. Mr. Putin. The ongoing invasion of Ukraine has shown that your regime has no respect for human rights or the self-determination of your neighbors. Members of Anonymous have declared cyber war against your aggressive regime, with numerous government websites being taken offline in the past several days. All right. So the group has claimed credit for hacking the Russian Ministry of Defense database and is believed to have hacked multiple state TV channels and shows that were pro-Ukrainian content. A tweet from the account linked to Anonymous at uh, their Twitter account essentially said, the cyber conflict has been fought in the shadows, but in the case with Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it is a group that it calls itself Anonymous that has made the most public declaration of war. The group has claimed credit for several cyber incidents, including the distribution denial of service attacks, where sites are rendered unreachable by being bombarded with traffic that has brought down government websites uh, for Russia today. The state-backed news service says that their denial of a service attack still appear to be working, while the official sites for the Kremlin and Ministry of Defense still inaccessible uh, at this time. So you now have a whole different region going on. And in the dark web and uh, on the Internet, it's a very uh, tight-knit community of developers and hackers. And now you have essentially a large hacking group. Anonymous that has essentially said, Russia, since you're going to war, we're actually going to do everything we can to hack into your information that's available there. That's that's very interesting. And I wonder if this all of a sudden starts opening up other issues to come moving forward. Any Anything that we do that's the, the first of something always opens a door to the more of something. So, so, so this if is, we open the door to, yeah, if this if this is a door that's opening and it's a first... Uh, it's not going to close again. That's that's how we are as humans. 
So, but it's not really like a state sponsored because this is individuals that have decided to come together and attack a country itself. So, is this something that we're happy about as a technology community, or is this something that really kind of worries us? Because if we open this up now, what's to say if I don't like something the well, U.S. I, does, I'm going to decide to, I, I think to that do would them be also. Both. Okay, if if they can, if they can, like I said, we're seeing something that. I don't know that anybody was prepared to see, or maybe people have been planning for this or not, but we're seeing a whole new aspect of of conflict around the world because everything's so close-knit uh, and information travels so quickly. We're seeing a lot more uh, instantaneous sort of reactions to this. So, you know, this is this is apparently a very unpopular thing that's going on. Right, uh, the war. Yes, I right? would think so. Yes, and so if we see these these folks acting in that regard and taking revenge on on Russia, yeah, what's to say they're going to be a not high... decide to do that against Poland or Ukraine yeah. or France or anybody else, or anybody, that, anybody else that has an issue, anybody right? else? Right. So well, I don't know. What are like so I said, my other once, question we, is, once we op- once we open a door on something, Pandora's it box never closes. Open. Yeah. So, so remember box. the beginning of the year here. We talked about Russia that took all these Russian uh, cyber gangs and decided to dismantle them. Where where are all these people now? Oh, they're working for the Russian government. Ah, we're going to be asking Nick about that specifically That's, because yeah. all of a sudden they disappear, and then Russia does this big thing. Oh, we stop this. We stop this. We stop this. But all of a sudden they've disappeared, and now Russia has all of a sudden. This great you know, cyber sure, criminals I'm, yeah, I'm sure, I'm that are sure attacking that, other places. That's right. I'm sure that all this cyber stuff that's going on is not is is not excluded from Russian use. Okay. So we're gonna be talking about that later too. All right, Mike, our time is up. We got through the top stories. If you want to learn more, please visit us online at techtimeradio.com and click on our episode section or blog to get more details on the stories and features. Now it's time for us to get ready for our whisking tasting at the break. But up next. We're going to shift to our main story of the day uh, much earlier than normal. We have Nick Espinoza on from Chicago to talk all about what's happening in the war on technology between Russia and Ukraine. We have updates regarding Russia and Ukraine individually. Our hearts and prayers are for everyone in Ukraine as they f- are fighting an unprovoked war. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Mike Odie and Nick Espinoza waiting to join you. I'm Nathan Mum. We'll see you after the break. Hey, Mike. What? Have you heard of Elderberry? Only in reference to a Monty Python movie. Well, let me tell you, Elderberry Boost. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. Yes, Mike, that's Elderberry Boost. You can choose Organic Elderberry Boost, that eight-ounce size. It's available on sale right now at eleven ninety nine. But you're listening here right now on Tech Time Radio, so you need to go to Elderberry, that's E-L-D-E-R-B-E-R-R-Y-Boost.com and get some today. Elderberry Boost. Elderberry is an all-natural organic immune system booster and antiviral. Elderberry is known to actively fight against viruses, including colds and the flu. It also works as a natural remedy for allergies, cancer, digestion, heart disease, high cholesterol, headache, toothache, weight loss, and reduced inflammation. It's a natural and healthy diuretic and has many antiviral properties. While it is famous for fighting the flu, it is effective for any illness. Elderberry Boost was created to provide a quality organic elderberry to their customers. After searching years ago for a perfect elderberry syrup, none could be found, so they essentially created their own homemade recipe. If you would like to get 15% off your first order of Elderberry Boost, just put in the discount code TECHTIME at checkout. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. The Tech Time radio show is an hourly technology show that talks about current technology in a simple format without having to geek out. Brought to you by Nathan Mum and Mike Day. We just had our first whiskey tasting during the break, and now let me tell you all about what we were sipping in our pick of the day. So we have chosen the Hardware Distillery Small Batch Whiskey. This is from a very local uh, small... A company here in the Pacific Northwest. It's 84 proof. It's $33.99 for a 375 milliliter bottle. As you can see here, that's our size. And if you get the normal size that we get, our 750 milliliter, you're about 68 bucks to 70 bucks. So it's kind of a premier whiskey. It's from Washington. It's distilled from water from Olympus, uh, from uh, Mount Olympus and the Hood Canal 
watershed on the Olympic Peninsula, handcrafted in a copper pot still. This spirit has been breathed with salt air from the shores of the beautiful Hood Canal. It has a very distinct taste, and it is as close as you can get to scotch without really being scotch because it's not done in Scotland. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to have some mumbling from Mark here well, about this. So this is produced by the Hardware Distillery Company, located in Hoodsport, Washington. Uh, it's, again, 84 proof. It's a description is Scottish lowland grain style whiskey is known to be very gentle and floral style. I had a very gentle and floral style. Did, you, did, is that how you would describe it? How, is that how you described yours? No. Okay. Well, that's what I, it's very light and has distinctive taste for whiskey that is very Scottish in taste. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. We're going to see if we like it. I already know if I like it because I, I tried yeah, some you last are, night you at the production pre-taste meeting. pre-taste everything. I had so. some at the production meeting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, now we're well, about. My, we're, my, my vote is still out. You're so, oh, you're still undecided. Well, I, I, I know what my vote's going to be. Yeah. You know, you realize the last three shows have all been like thumbed down shows. That's because you bring gross whiskey. <laughs> no, I just go and try to find the most unique labels I can find. So uh-huh. here we go. Sure. This is, again, a very unique one. All right. All right. We're about ready to get it to into our primary segment, the war on technology between Russia and Ukraine. As we have our expert here joining us, Nick Espinoza. Let's get ready to start this. Welcome to the segment we call Ask the Experts. With our Tech Time Radio expert, Nick Espinoza. As we get Nick ready, now he just spent 20 plus minutes doing an interview of the Ukrainian Member of Parliament, Ina Sovinson. Ina. Ina Sovinson. Ina Sovinson. Sovinson. Uh, Sovinson? Yeah. Okay. Hey, all right. Hey, here's a snippet. It's about a two-minute snippet of his 20 minutes, and I would tell everybody they should absolutely go over and we'll share this out on Twitter and listen to his full interview. So let's play right. that little expert now. So I will try to explain uh, briefly how the situation looks like. So so for, for your audience to understand is that Putin did attack Ukraine from three different directions at the same time. The, the first night of the war, they started bombing Ukrainian military targets, initially to, with the goal of uh, making sure that they destroy our aviation and our uh, storages with weapons. But they, they failed to do so uh, because Ukrainian uh, counter air defense uh, systems did work uh, but they did hit some well several targets but not as many as they expected i mean what we've also been getting reports of are relentless cyber attacks as well against your infrastructure and all of that trying to knock out communication systems uh, so the infrastructure is working uh, there are troubles with connections in some areas particularly the ones where the major battles are taking place uh, mm-hmm. but uh, it is uh, more or less stable as of now Regarding the cyber attacks, there have been many cyber attacks in the past couple of uh, weeks leading to the war. Right. Uh, but right now, uh, another story that you probably should follow, given your background and your, your focus, is this, uh, that uh, the anonymous community have launched this major attack on Russian websites. And, and we are watching that like, like with great uh, well, admiration and, and thank yeah. you if, if uh, anyone involved in that is listening to this. Thank you on behalf of all the Ukrainians. This is extremely um, helping. Uh, so uh, as of now, the cyber attacks on the Ukrainian websites, we don't see too many of those. Uh, so it is uh, it is better than it used to be. Uh, but so, so actually now we are fighting back in terms of cyber warfare uh, to a very big extent. If you're in the United States and you're listening to the, this, call to your congressman, write an email, go to a rally in support of Ukraine and, and do voice those uh, demands on the Ukrainian side. All right. Okay, so there you go. That's a couple minutes of the large extended 20-minute deal. So we're bringing Nick Espinosa on the show. Nick's a regular contributor to Tech Time Radio, so hopefully he's coming on up here. We're going to talk about a lot of this cyber. As you can hear in the interview, cyber attacks are coming from Russia, Mm -hmm. right? And they're going to Ukraine, and Russia's attacking many other just global bombardments of different items. They have software that they're putting out to... WordPress sites to many different sites trying to take people down. And then now you have Ukraine that's kind of fighting back a little bit with their uh, support from, as we talked about earlier in the show, Anonymous deciding to kind of hack away at Russia and get some information and and other people that have been pulled into this. So, Nick, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thanks Uh, for having me. Yes. 
Nick, this that was a great interview, and, and we're going to talk, make sure people have a chance to listen to that fully, uh, the 20 minutes of that, uh, after we talk to you currently what's going on for Russia. Now, I want to talk about the technical aspects on both sides of this war, right? Um, and, and I'm going to try to be respectful as much as I can. I firmly support Ukraine's leadership and the innocent people that are being attacked, so I'm very biased on, on some of the stuff here. Uh, with my personal opinions, but we're going to just talk about the technology and you know, the technology that's being used by both Russia uh, and Ukraine during this time. So let's let's start with Russia, right? So sure. what is it like for the current Russian citizen waking up today trying to use technology? What has their life been changed from what they had a week ago to what they're doing today? Well, I think it's important to understand that we oftentimes essentially take for granted the technology that's around us. Meaning we wake up and we know things are going to work. We can turn on Netflix and watch something as we get ready for work or do whatever we we, we want to do. This morning, and, and also for the last couple of mornings, um, essentially Russian people have woken up to not having major social media from the West be available, not have streaming systems uh, be available, cyber attacks against their banks. We're seeing runs on the banks as well uh, that are, are a serious problem. You're also waking up basically bankrupt because their currency is now less than one cent per ruble compared to the U.S. dollar. So these are huge disruptions, uh, you know, to their everyday life. And and when we are looking at cyber attacks against infrastructure against Russia, um, you know, then we have also further supply chain disruptions that we are seeing, uh, you know, in Russia as well as you know just day to day life completely turned on its head. While they're not being bombed, life is definitely not the same as it was five days ago for those people, and it's a huge, huge problem for them obviously for their government as well. And, you know, again, opinions aside on, on all of this, this is just heartbreaking all around. It really is. So let's talk about specific services. What services are not working in Russia right now? So if I get up uh, Twitter, like, am I able to use Twitter? Am I able to use Facebook? Am I able to use TikTok? Am I able to clearly probably not go down to the bank and, and get a transfer? What, what happens if I want to purchase an app on an app store and my rubles now are, are, are worth pennies on the dollar type of deal. So explain to that what, right. what, what has been affected uh, and has been altered. Right. Well, we're getting reports that that essentially there were runs on banks, people looking to actually withdraw foreign currency, not Russian currency, the ruble, uh, specifically because of that issue, that that essentially it's useless and worthless at this point. It is completely tanked by virtue of um, basically key institutions being removed by SWIFT and all of that. So essentially, uh, I, I was doing experiments myself. I started routing my own connections through Russia, trying to get to various sites and all of that. Uh, it, it tends to be incredibly spotty right now. A lot of them are not responding. Most of the streaming services and social media are cutting them out. So Netflix, for example, has an agreement, uh, and they are still operating within Russia, but they are abandoning the agreement with the Russian government to say that if there is Netflix connections coming from Russia, that they have to include state TV. Uh, uh, Netflix, Netflix is not agreeing with that, um, and they're shutting them off, as is Facebook, TikTok, essentially all big tech as well. Microsoft's uh, security centers are also in the process of shutting off Russian connections due to the amount of cyber attacks and retaliation that we're starting to see. Um, and we are seeing those here as well. I actually did another interview with a nam uh, man named uh, Dan Dyson. He's the president of the U uh, Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, uh, uh, Illinois division here in Chicago, where we have a huge Ukrainian population. Um, and he himself, in my interview with him yesterday as well, said that that he's actually been hacked uh he had to have his technology cleaned as well so it's going both ways but essentially we are seeing a lot of essential services uh in russia that that are are coming from the west western tech big tech companies simply not working or or having vastly reduced and limited functionality in that country essentially they're going to be stuck uh for the most part with TikTok, which is china based which from, from what I understand, has not pulled the plug yet. And China has been very reticent to condemn or support this on either side right now. They're playing it very coy. Um, and so by virtue of that, TikTok's available, but most of the Western social media and all of that is simply out or it's vastly limited. Um, and Russian infrastructure right now is under constant cyber attack, not just from anonymous, but we also believe without 
you know, officially confirming in other intelligence agencies around the globe as well. In the same way that we are supplying um, the Ukrainians with arms and weapons, the United States and Germany have agreed to send anti-tank missiles, all those kinds of things. We also believe unconfirmed reports that that intelligence services around the world are going to task on Russia as well. All right. So let's talk about not a that? really pop, not a big popular choice there for. So so I, I pulled some stats up too because because I like to stats out with and geek out about this mm. a little bit. So we're right. trying to keep this not yeah, too geeky. Try right? not to yeah. Try not to get too involved. So do you know that eighty five percent of the Russian population uses Facebook and Facebook mm-hmm. Messenger as their primary modes of communication? Unlike us in the. Uh, West, where we still use cell phones as our primary modes of communication, Messenger and Facebook, mm-hmm. those WhatsApp. those tools are their What's... primary communication to families, to information that's going on. That is their main source. Okay, and WhatsApp as well, and WhatsApp. Yeah, face- now WhatsApp is kind of property. Yeah, now WhatsApp is kind of becoming is going to be an interesting deal because I think a lot of people are moving to try to use WhatsApp over there right now in Russia to, because I believe that that is still working uh, from the information that I have here is that that, that was still working and was becoming a uh, uh, suggestion to use to communicate with people. All right, let's talk about military here. The military people of Russia, those include the ground forces in Russia or Ukraine. How has the military been affected by outside sources and technology? Yeah. So interestingly enough, this is this is the first war that we've seen that that actually has uh, an integrated social media component to it. And as Russia was amassing on Ukraine's border prior to the invasion, we knew that they were moving massive amounts of um, troops and also hardware and equipment uh, to the borders thanks to TikTok, meaning that tank column was running through that Russian town and people on TikTok were saying, hey, look at the tanks go by. Uh, intelligence agencies around the world started gathering that, started identifying or had the ability to start identifying specific columns, tanks, uh, designations, all that to start understanding troop strengths and positions around the globe. There, that is no different now. We are starting to see um, coming out of Russia you know, via TikTok and other social media platforms that are still working there or partially working there, uh, basically um, how-to videos from Russian dissidents that basically, uh, and I just saw one earlier today of a young woman that essentially said, you know, here's a, here's a Russian uh, armored personnel carrier. Here's how you start it. Here's how you drive it. Here's how you go on. And she is broadcasting that to the citizens of Ukraine, basically meaning if you're able to take over this equipment, use it for your own purposes. And so this is a war that is unlike anything that we've seen in the sense that we are seeing a lot of these things in real time. A lot of the videos that we're getting are not coming from the CNNs and the BBCs of the world. They're coming from citizen journalists. They're coming from brave Ukrainians that are sitting there filming this. And in terms of uh, Russians as well. It's very hard to position when anybody that's you know within earshot or or eye shot, I should say, in a camera can broadcast literally to the world to say, "Hey, here's where they are. Here's where we're going." On top of that, coordinating communications, especially through things like satellite, could be a very precarious thing for the Russians because we have the ability to start hacking and knocking out satellites. It's something we are conversely aware of and concerned about here in terms of retaliatory attacks against Russia. So, so this is a war unlike anything that we've seen. And I remember back, I want to say it was 10, 20 years ago, um, when now, I don't think he was with Fox News then, maybe he was, but Geraldo Rivera basically got on the air and drew like, okay, we're here and the troops are here and all of that, and drew a map in the sand. I believe it was in Iraq or Afghanistan. And he got chastised for that, for giving away troop positions. Yeah. Now, anybody with an iPhone or an Android is is literally Geraldo in that situation. And there's a million of them. So it's a very difficult war to fight offensively for the Russians by virtue of that. All right. So last quick question. How is the infrastructure technology? So if I was to open up the server arrays and in, in the networking configuration of Russia's infrastructure, is it up to date? Is it a little dated? Where Where is their current infrastructure before they decide to go to war uh, that they had available to them? So it's it's interesting in the sense that in 2021, if you were not aware, Russia actually did a dry run 
of cutting themselves off from the internet of the world. You mentioned earlier in the radio show that we can just blacklist all IP addresses coming out of Russia. And that's one of the official recommendations that we have for businesses. If you have a next generation firewall, do geo blocking on uh, essentially the entire world, except for where you do business, let's say the United States. And so they have actually done dry runs, understanding that at some point in preparation for something like this, if they have retaliation, they can cut off the internet and still function internally, having that infrastructure there. So they've been, uh, I think, modernizing as, as best they can, but they don't have the same depth that a lot of other nations do. They're a petroleum-based country. That's what they do. That's all they sell. Um, and so they are essentially beholden to the West, not to mention the fact they can't get their hands on um, a lot of the more advanced technology, at least legally. And so it'd be very hard for them to go to, let's say, that advanced firewall maker here, let's say, in Silicon Valley and say, yeah, we want 20,000 of those because by law, they're not allowed to sell them to the Russians. So, all right. Let's move yeah. to Ukraine. All right. So we yeah. had all the all the information here. Let's talk about Ukraine. Besides the horrors of, of course, bombings and other aspects, how is the technology for the Ukrainian people when they wake up in the morning? Well, as as Inna mentioned, the member of parliament that you you played the snippet for um, mentioned that it is hit or miss. In a war zone, it's always changing. News is always going to be retroactive. What we know right now is probably what happened anywhere from five minutes to five hours ago. And what we are seeing um, is essentially, especially as I'm reaching out to multiple members of of their parliament, other senior leaders in the Ukraine government. I've had conversations with about half a dozen of them over um, the last five days or so. And just putting together, just as an example, it was heartbreaking uh, putting this this interview together with Inna. Um, we had a scheduled date over the weekend. She missed it, just didn't show up. And then we got reports uh, about half hour, hour, hour later where the area we thought she was in was being very heavily bombed and we feared the worst. Um, and then she popped up hours later saying I had to relocate to a shelter, all these kinds of things. And so what we are seeing, I think, is what she was talking about is that it's hit or miss. But as the Russians continue to pound uh, essentially Kiev, Kharkiv and some of the other large cities in Ukraine, uh, we are going to see spotty Internet coming out of there, which is why, um, as as uh, you mentioned earlier too, Elon Musk and Starlink, uh, that equipment is now starting to arrive in uh, in Ukraine, and hopefully the Ukrainian government will be using that to continue to communicate with the rest of the world. But as of right now, the infrastructure in Ukraine appears to be uh, mostly online. And it's also important to understand that Ukraine is the size of Texas, roughly. And so the Western Ukraine- With the population uh, of uh, California. Yeah. Right? So yeah. the population of California in the size of Texas. Yep. Right. And so Western Ukraine right now is fully online. And so if uh, basically others in Ukraine can get relayed messages to Western Ukraine, they can then broadcast them out as well. And that tends to be a bit of a lifeline here as well. But it's a messy situation as I'm talking to you. Um, essentially, we are getting reports right now as we are keeping up to date here that essentially uh, the Russians are relentlessly um, missile attacking uh, Kiev right now, the capital. So, so we'll see where that is. But as of, as it stands right now, a lot of the infrastructure is still running, and we're very grateful for that. All right. Now for the military of Ukraine. What technology are they using, and how are they using this to communicate out? Yeah, well, like all governments, they have uh, internal hardened systems that allow their defense forces to talk to each other to help coordinate. Part of anything in cyber warfare or warfare is essentially to attempt to make your enemy deaf and blind before you attack. Uh, and so if they're able to knock out, the Russians are able to knock out that infrastructure and the Ukrainians would not be able to coordinate, it would be much easier for them on the ground. We have seen the exact opposite, where the Russians have not been able to essentially make the gains they thought they would. The Ukrainians have been dug in, they've been coordinating excellently so far. Um, and so we know that a lot of the hardened infrastructure that their fences are using have to be up by virtue of that, as well as um, specialized radios, encrypted radios that, that broadcast traffic. So for example, here we have emergency networks uh, in the United States called P29. The Ukrainians are going to have something very similar to that, um, if not P29 itself. And so as we are looking at these things, they, they have been holding their own and maintaining this. But again, as the bombings happen, we have to expect that some of that is going to go out, not to mention the 40 mile long tank column heading to Kiev as of a few hours ago. So so it's it's going to be a very harrowing couple of days. All right. So last question. Ukraine was massively attacked by Russia, right? So here, here's my yes. loaded question, right? My loaded question for Nick. Interesting that all of the 
cyber criminal gangs all kind of got captured by Russia two months leading into this war itself, Mm -hmm. right? So um, it does look like some of the signatures that have been put out and some of the processes may have been from some of those existing groups. Uh, As a cybersecurity expert, what is your feeling on how uh, Russia is attacking on the cyber uh, front and what type of experts do they have? Right. So when we're looking at it, some of the largest groups, and actually when I was on the last time, I think it was the last time actually I was yep. on the show, I talked about our evil or revol that that was essentially arrested. And the statement that I made is we'll see if they actually are going to be prosecuted because they are not extraditing anybody uh, to the United States or other countries that want to see these individuals prosecuted. And we also know historically that Russian intelligence, the, you know, the GRU and the FSB use these uh, cyber gangs, cyber criminal gangs as cutouts. They give them a, essentially free reign, a blind eye in the infrastructure to allow them to do whatever they do, knowing they can be leveraged uh, for these kinds of things. So it would not surprise me in the least if essentially uh, they uh, are evil and other groups were essentially told, hey, now you're working for us. Now you've made a ton of money and now you're on our payroll 24-7 uh, because you are going to have to defend the motherland here. And so I have no doubt whatsoever that a lot of the signatures, tactics, and indicators of compromise that we will be seeing in the next couple of weeks as we start basically banking on and, and hunkering down for ret- retaliatory attacks here uh, in the West, the United States, and our allies, um, they're going to have signatures that are going to be very similar, if not exactly the same, to a lot of these gangs. Uh, and I, I'd put money on it. I really would. All right. So let's, let's tell, how can people contact you and how can people get that interview uh, or listen to that interview that you have done with uh, the parliament of Ukraine? Inna, yes, Inna, Inna Sovson. So uh, yeah, you can go to my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Nick Espinoza, and you'll literally see me there. And it's like one of the first videos. It'll be in the top left of the playlist as well. So uh, go ahead and watch that. I really recommend everybody watch it. And I don't usually ask to share, but please share that. It's just so important that that they get the word out right now. Uh, You can also connect to me on LinkedIn at slash Nick Espinoza, or you can follow me on Twitter at slash Nick A-E-S-P, Nick A-E-S-P. I have all that there as well as other interviews I've done and more interviews I've got with Ukrainian members that I'm lining up right now. So, so, so right. Nick, do you do you think the Russian government vastly underestimated the backlash that they're getting from all these different avenues of cyber crime? Yes. Uh, yes. And the, the real indicator of that is we've known for some time that Vladimir Putin himself um, has been essentially shifting the economy of Russia as well as moving his wealth into places that he believed would essentially harden them against any kind of retaliation. I don't think that they were essentially, I don't think they had the understanding that NATO would galvanize in a way that it hasn't galvanized in decades, that essentially the European Union itself would step in and say, you know what, take all the refugees where you want Poland, we're going to pay for this. I don't think they were expecting this massive united front against them or at this level. I don't think they were expecting their economies to crash in the way that they did. He was expecting that he had hardened and shifted the economy enough. And the te- and the proof of that is the dry run they did last year, cutting off uh, Russia from the world temporarily just to make sure their intranets would work. Mm. They were not expecting this at all. And I, I have to imagine, especially if he is becoming unhinged, uh, and a lot of intelligence analysts believe this, it puts it into a terrifying prospect because if they're a crash in the economy and his own people are revolting against him. Another thing I don't think they were expecting at that level, this man also has the button on yes. um, thousands of nuclear weapons. It yeah. is a it is a deeply concerning situation. Well, we, we just hope that the cyber criminals can crack into that so when he hits the button it no, just no. goes it goes beep, 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 yeah. beep, and nothing happens. <laughs> That well, would let, be nice. Let, let's that listen. would be nice. I don't and, think that's and, the case, yeah. but I, yes, that would be nice. Yeah, that uh, would be nice. All right, Nick, we are running out of time. We, we, we're going to see how uh, the technology aspect in this war continues. We may have you back on in a week or so, uh, depending on how things change. But thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us here on Tech Time Radio. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Nick. All right. Thank well, you. that ends our segment, Ask the Expert. But when we return, we have This Week in Technology with a little bit of an apple bite. See you after the break. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee 
which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, do you ever feel tired, have a headache, or maybe a little bit under dehydrated? Yeah, I get told that I need to hydrate more often. Guess what, Mike? I have a solution for you. What And what is it? Hydronique Hydration. The electrolyte power drink packets are available for you now. Started in the midst of the pandemic, the founder of Hydronique Hydration, a frontline healthcare worker, started developing constant headaches. Do you know that most powdered drinks on the market have tons of sugar and caffeine, especially those rock star and Gatorade substitutes? Yeah, like you drink. So I'm going to need to change. So what did the founder do? Well, that's why he created Hydronique Hydration, sugar-free, keto-friendly, plant-based, antioxidant-rich, electrolyte powdered packets for daily use containing all the essential vitamins and minerals with a refreshing taste their product contains elderberry elderberry which has immune boosting properties for supporting during cold and flu season hydronic hydration electrolyte powder packets can also fit in your bag or suitcase when traveling your busy days in 2022 can change do you want a sugar-free keto-friendly vitamin drink to give you hydration boosts if so give Hydronique Hydration a try. You can visit the website at www.hydroniquehydration. It's www.hydroniquehydration.com. hydration.com. That's the word hydration and unique mashed together. Or you can search for Hydronique Hydration on amazon.com or on their own website at hydroniquehydration.com. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Would you like to buy a bigger home? How about retire earlier than you thought? Pay your children's education, make a big purchase, or any other big financial decisions? Isn't everybody? I think everybody does. And guess what? Fortunately, we'll help you make it simpler. Make sure you visit fortunately.io forward slash tech time. Again, that's fortunately.io forward slash tech time. Here's a couple of things that you might want to know. The tool is completely free to you. You enter in your basic details, your life goals, like if you want to buy a first or second home, save to send your kids to college, or make that big purchase. Once you enter your details, tell you how much you need to set aside and in what accounts, like a brokerage or a 401k or Roth, etc. All you need to do is go to fortunately.io slash tech time. Fortunately uses data to help people achieve their financial goals, providing simple answers to the complex questions. Should I put my money into 401k versus my children's 529? Or how much house can I afford? Or should I use extra money to pay off my debt or invest? Life happens, but not randomly. Make sure you look to fortunately.io forward slash tech time to help you run the number so you can save money and live your best life with confidence. Hey, Mike, did you know that Unidragon puzzles are a great relaxation? Yes, I did. The 21st century widespread digitalization pushes people to have gadget-free rest. In this case, puzzles become a convenient and actual way of having rest. Yeah, they're a great way to relax. They give your brain a reboot. Is Make sure that you visit Unidragon.com with the discount code for 10% off with the code TIME10. That's T-I-M-E, the number 10, for all of our Tech Time fans across the nation. Do you know that puzzles are relatively simple tools that solve a complex range of problems? In game form, we learn useful, analytical, and communicative skills that will find the application in work, study, and other spheres of life. Yeah, they are great forms of relaxation and revitalization. Do you know that Unidragon's collections now have dinosaurs? Oh, that's my that's that's one of my favorite things. You got to make sure you keep the promo code. It's time 10 because all of our audience across the nation can use time 10 to receive a 10 percent discount at Unidragon. That's Unidragon.com. Don't be fooled by other imitation puzzle makers. Visit Unidragon.com. The only spot for your true thinking puzzles and now let's look back at this week in technology all right a bite of the apple march 1st 1976 steve wozniak completes the basic design for a circuit board 
that is relatively easy to use as a personal computer. The next day, he shows it off at the Home Brew Computer Club, which an individual by the name of Steve Jobs attends. Jobs realizes the potential and convinces Wozniak not to give away the schematics, but instead produce the printed circuit boards to sell. The two Steves form a company, which they name Apple, and Wozniak's design becomes the basis of the Apple One computer. And as the rest they say, yeah, is you're history. Gonna, you're going to use that? Yes. Okay. All right. So this, so you, so you realize this homebrew computer club. Mm-hmm. So Wozniak goes, says, hey, this is what I've been working on with these programmable ROMs. So again, you had to write code into these. This, is what, we did, this is what we did in the, in the 70s and 80s was we joined computer clubs. Correct. And you'd have it at somebody's house. You'd all come and you'd geek out and talk about code and talk about this. He produces this whole system board. He was going to give the schematics away for free to yeah. everybody so that they the could build their own. shareware. Else. Yep. And then all of a sudden there's an individual there by the name of Steve Jobs. Ah, 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 ah. I got a better idea. Yeah. How about we just make these the for people? Opportunist. And then we'll sell these and we'll see what happens. There you there go. There you go. All right. Well, that was our This Week in Technology. Have you ever wanted to watch some technology history? Well, we have two years of videos you can visit at techtimeradio.com and watch all of our older shows. Make sure to sign up for our newsletter and subscribe to the best technology information or become a part of our Tech Time Face group. All right. Well, the next thing we're going to move into, Mike, this is what we've been waiting for. It's Mike's Mesmerizing Moment. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. All right. So, All right. so, so explain this to me. We have uh, Zulinski, right, who is the president of Ukraine. Mm-hmm. He has convinced people to come out and defend the country, and yet Russian so- shoulder, sh- soldiers... soldiers? That's a little bit of that whiskey. Soldiers. Soldiers are essentially are just staying in their tanks and not following their leader. What makes a great leader and why are people following great leadership? Explain that's, this to that's me. That's a really complicated question. Thank okay, you very much. Well, you got like two and a half minutes. Yeah, so. that, I can I can fit absolutely <laughs> everything into that two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So which which we're talking about Zelensky, right? Yeah. So so and what makes a great leader? Well, there's a lot of ways that this but there's a lot of dynamics that are going on the first dynamic is that their country is being threatened okay right their way of life is being threatened so that's going to galvanize the population into doing something because of survival mode they're going into survival mode they're going to do that uh then then they're going to be looking for somebody to help them make decisions okay right because as as a a group a a popular populist group uh, they're not known for being able to work on their own. Okay. So it's, it's like the whole argument, where do you want to go for dinner? Yeah. Right? I don't, I don't know. know. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Right? So that there's a whole lot of that going on very simplistically uh, because we don't know how to make those decisions. Somebody can step in and say, this is what we're going to do. That helps. That helps give the folks in that group direction it helps gives them a sense of comfort because somebody is taking that responsibility. It absolves them of the responsibility of making the choice because of whatever consequences that they may obtain. It there's a lot of stuff going on there, so that's a really complicated answer. Now the fact that the fact that uh, the Russians are driving through and they're, you know, we're getting a lot of a lot of these little social media posts where you know, Ukrainian citizens are going up and talking to these people and. And you know they're convincing they're, them to they're not convincing continue. them not to do stuff. That yep. that kind of shows that kind of shows that uh, you know the Russian army may not be as committed to this as as some people think they are. So you know the leadership from that aspect is you know somebody has made a decision that is not popular, obviously with with the the rest of the Russian state, and they're doing their jobs, but they're doing it as as little as possible. Okay. So there's there's so much going on in those two dynamics, in those aspects that just answering that question, I really can't do. So, but so a leader giving direction to people is what people are looking for. We r- humans respond to uh, leadership. Okay. So human beings are attracted to people who are confident. They are attracted to people who have answers. 
Okay. And so that is one of the that is one of the reasons why a, a good leader can do uh, well. A leader at all can do things that we, even a bad leader can do, make changes. All right. Well, let's get to our pick of the day. We have our Hardware Distillery Small Batch Whiskey, eighty four proof, thirty three dollars a bottle. Are you going to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Yeah, I'm going to give it a thumbs down. What? Yeah. I'm going to give it absolutely a thumbs up. I'm helping our local community, and I actually like scotch, so I, well, I thought it was really I good. I like scotch, too, but this one, this one, this it's one just, I'm it's not, a, It didn't hit I'm your not, fancy, huh? It's, it's not a bad whiskey, but it's not a good whiskey. So, so you wouldn't pay the 60 bucks? I would, it would not be? pay 60 bucks for this one. Okay. All right. Well, I, you know what? I, I think I probably would. So I, I kind of, you know, a little yeah, scotch, and a, a little I scotch. Know. I don't know about uh, that. I don't know. A little scotch and a little I Red Bull. You, yeah. Okay. Mm, or, or a little rock star. That always works really well. Well, we're almost out of time here. We thank you for listening and hope that you enjoyed the show. You can always check us out at techtimeradio.com. And remember, the science of tomorrow starts with the technology of the day. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube, so check us out on youtube.com slash techtimeradio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.